Right now, workers are racing against time on one of the most ambitious engineering projects in India's history. A massive wall of concrete stretches across the mighty Godavari River, the Polavaram Dam. At $3 billion, it promises to change the future of an entire region. But after decades of delays and controversies, many wonder if this mega project will ever be completed. What's really happening with this enormous dam? And could it actually change the climate of an entire state? The answers might surprise you. The Polavaram project isn't just big, it's gigantic. When finished, this concrete beast will stand nearly 150 feet tall and stretch over 1.5 miles across the Godavari River in Andhra Pradesh. Think about it this way. The project will move enough earth to build 40 great pyramids of Giza. The concrete used could pave a two-lane highway from Mumbai to Delhi. And the steel? Enough to build four Eiffel Towers. But what really makes Polavaram special isn't its size. It's what it will do. This isn't just a dam. It's a lifeline for millions of people. The project aims to link two of India's biggest rivers, the Godavari and the Krishna. This massive feat of engineering will redirect water through nearly 175 miles of canals, bringing life-giving irrigation to 720,000 acres of farmland. That's roughly the size of Rhode Island, transformed from dry land to fertile fields. And that's not all. The dam will generate 960 megawatts of clean hydroelectric power, enough to power over 2 million Indian homes. During monsoon season, it will tame the Godavari's dangerous floods that have killed thousands over the decades. But here's where things get complicated. The Polavaram project was first proposed in 1941, before India even gained independence. Yet more than 80 years later, it remains unfinished. Why? The problem started with politics. The project sits at the border of three different states, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, and Odisha. Each state has fought over water rights, land boundaries, and who would benefit most. These political battles have stalled construction for decades. Then there's the human cost. The reservoir created by the dam will submerge 276 villages, forcing more than 100,000 people to leave their homes. Many of these people are tribal communities who have lived on this land for generations. Their protests have been fierce and persistent. The government has promised fair compensation and resettlement packages, but many affected villagers claim the offers fall far short of replacing what they'll lose. Not just homes, but livelihoods tied to the river and land that money can't easily replace. Environmental groups have raised alarms too. The project will flood nearly 4,000 hectares of forest land, threatening rare plant species and disrupting wildlife corridors used by tigers and elephants. The massive changes to river flow could also harm fish populations that locals depend on. Critics point to India's track record with similar projects. The Sardar Saravar Dam on the Narmada River faced decades of protests over similar issues of displacement and environmental damage. Many wonder if Polavaram is repeating these same mistakes on an even larger scale. And we haven't even mentioned the engineering challenges. The dam site sits in an area prone to earthquakes. Heavy monsoon rains repeatedly damage construction work, and the sheer scale of the project makes every step difficult and expensive. In 2014, the project was declared a national project, meaning the central government would cover most of the costs. But the price tag keeps growing. Originally budgeted at about $200 million in the 1990s, it's now estimated at over $3 billion, 15 times the initial cost. So where does the project stand today? After decades of stops and starts, construction has accelerated in the past few years. The main dam structure is about 70% complete. Two massive coffer dams have been built to divert the river while construction continues. The spillway, which will release excess water during floods, is nearly finished. Engineers face immense challenges daily. The spillway alone is designed to handle 3.6 million cubic feet of water per second, one of the largest capacities in the world. Getting this wrong, could lead to catastrophic failures downstream. The project uses advanced construction techniques, including roller compacted concrete, which allows faster placement than traditional methods. Massive gantry cranes move across the construction site, placing concrete blocks weighing several tons each with precision measured in millimeters. But serious problems remain. The right and left main canals are far from complete. Land acquisition battles continue in courts and funding issues persist despite the national project status. In 2019, a newly elected state government ordered a review of the entire project, 
claiming corruption and poor planning by previous administrations. This led to another delay of nearly a year. Then came the COVID-19 pandemic, which scattered workers and disrupted supply chains. Monsoon floods in 2020 and 2022 damaged parts of the incomplete structure, requiring expensive repairs. The central government has now set a strict deadline of 2025 for completion, but few believe this is realistic given the project's troubled history. Some independent engineers estimate 2028 as the earliest possible completion date, if everything goes perfectly from now on. If, and it's still a big if, Polivaram is completed, the impact could be revolutionary for Andhra Pradesh and neighboring states. Water experts say the irrigation benefits could transform agriculture in the region. Farmers who currently depend on unpredictable rainfall could grow crops year-round. Rice production alone might increase by 3 million tonnes annually. This agricultural boost could lift millions out of poverty. The flood control aspects are equally important. The Godavari River has caused devastating floods throughout history. In 1986, floods killed over 1,500 people and displaced millions. Polovaram's massive reservoir could prevent such disasters. Some scientists even believe the project could change the local climate. By creating a massive water body and increasing irrigated land, the dam might increase humidity and rainfall in what is currently a drought-prone region. Computer models suggest temperatures could drop by 2 to 3 degrees Celsius in summer months. This climate modification isn't just theory. Similar effects have been observed around other large reservoirs worldwide. The Aswan High Dam in Egypt significantly altered local weather patterns after its completion in 1970. The hydroelectric component would provide clean energy at a time when India is trying to reduce its dependence on coal, and improved water access could spark industrial development in previously neglected areas. But skeptics point to other mega dams around the world that failed to deliver on their promises. They argue that the benefits are exaggerated, while the costs, both financial and human, are minimized. Critics cite the Three Gorges Dam in China, which displaced 1.3 million people and caused significant ecological damage. Others point to Brazil's Belo Monte Dam, which generated less power than projected while devastating indigenous communities. These cautionary tales raise important questions. Will Polivarum's benefits truly reach those who need them most? Will tribal communities be adequately compensated? And can any amount of engineering overcome the political divisions that have plagued the project for decades? Supporters respond that India needs bold infrastructure projects to secure its water future in an era of climate change. They point to successful examples like the Teri Dam, which has provided irrigation, power and flood control benefits despite initial controversy. Polivaram isn't happening in isolation. Worldwide, large dam projects have fallen out of favour with international development agencies. The World Bank, once a major funder of such projects, has become more cautious after seeing mixed results. Meanwhile, China continues to build massive dams at an unprecedented pace, giving them greater control over Asia's water resources. India's push to complete Polivaram can be seen partly as a response to this regional water competition. What happens at Polivaram could influence water management projects across the developing world. If successful, it might revive interest in large-scale water infrastructure. If it fails, it could accelerate the shift towards smaller, more distributed solutions. The race to complete Polivaram continues, with thousands of workers labouring day and night. But as concrete rises and political battles rage, one question remains unanswered. Will this massive wall across the Godavari River fulfil its decades-old promise to transform a region, or will it join the ranks of ambitious engineering dreams that prove too complex, too costly and too controversial to complete? Let us know what you think in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and watch our next one shown on screen. Thank you for watching.